Hey guys, it's Ann Yorks from The Flower Box and I'm bringing you hopefully a very timely tutorial today. It's all about graduation cookies and graduation parties can get really big. So my goal with this project is to keep my number of icing colors manageable and not make my cookie designs too complicated. Let's see if I can do that. So I'm gonna first show you how to do the three most popular graduation cookies, the diploma, the grad cap and the gown. Those are three excellent choices. They're easy to customize with school colors. Then in addition to that, I'm also gonna show you a congrats plaque. Now this plaque is really cool because it has grad caps in the background with a stenciled congrats on the top. And I'll also show you how to do that cookie in two different ways, a simple way and as a feature cookie. So let's cookie it up. Let's start off with the easiest cookie, the rolled diploma. So I'm gonna outline the diploma and fill it in with my flood icing. I'm using tip number two for that outline. Now I'm ready to add the big wide bow. I have tip number 44 on my navy icing bag and I'm keeping that tip flat as I pipe those nice wide sections, just adding a little wiggle as I pull the icing down. I love tip number 44 because it makes that bow so quick, but definitely looks substantial. Then size down to tip number 1.5 on my black to add the scroll details. I love the diploma cookie because just using school colors, it looks delicious and adorable. For most of the graduation projects I've done, I've always done a grad cap. So I'm gonna outline the top of the cap and the bottom. Notice I had a couple of icing pops. No worries there, I just patched those up with another piped line, but that's probably happening because my navy blue icing might be just a tad too thick or maybe I'm not squeezing hard enough. So once I have those areas outlined, I'm gonna flood in the bottom of the cap and I'll let that dry for about an hour in front of the fan. Then I'll come back and flood in the top part of the cap. And that gives that really beautiful definition line between the top and the bottom. And I do it in that order so that the top of the cap stands out from the bottom of the cap. Now I'm ready to create the tassel. I'm gonna outline the tassel area with tip number two. And then I'm gonna pipe the string with 301. It's similar to tip number 44. It's wide and flat but it's just a smaller version of tip number 44, and I love it for those little details. Now I'm flooding in the tassel, and I'm gonna add a nice black dot at the top to hold the tassel in place. For my tassel lines, I am still using tip 301. Those nice flat lines look super cool. I love the texture that they create. And then I switch back to tip number two, just to add that little section at the top of the tassel. The graduation cap with these details looks amazing. If you wanna take the cap to the next level, you can always personalize it, whether it's class of 2019 or maybe your graduate's name. Take a look at this example. It looks really cool. It adds a little bit of decorating time. You can find the template for this text on the blog post on our website. Now let's take a look at the gown. I'm still using my school colors, so I have my blue and my white, and I'm going to outline the white accent areas and then come back and outline the exterior of the cookie with the blue. And I do add a seam down the middle. I'm going to flood this cookie in sections to allow those icing areas to create a cool dimension going down the middle of the gown. So once section one is flooded, I'm ready to move on to the other side of the gown. I'll let those areas dry for about an hour in front of the fan and then I'm ready to finish off the flooding with the white. Now let's add some details. I'm gonna pipe some accents on the sleeves and the collar just to add a pop of color. That's with tip number 1.5. I've switched the white to tip 301 just to get that wide white stripe going down the gown. And I add some blue lines just as some folds in the fabric on the gown. I'm 
I'm almost done with this cookie. I'm just gonna clean up the seams between the blue and the white areas with a white piped line. Individually, each of these cookies looks awesome, but together as a set, they really look very festive for a graduation project. Plus they're totally doable, especially if you have a large graduation party that you're working on. One thing that makes this cookie project totally doable is the limited number of colors I'm doing. If you're looking for specific names on icing colors, a full materials list, or a yield on how much a single batch of dough will make, check out the blog post for extra tips on how to make these cookies. Plus, don't forget, we also have the templates available. Let's take a look at the cool plat cookie that we're making to go with this set. The first thing I wanna do is airbrush these graduation caps on the background of the cookie. And I'm doing it in silver because I want it to really be in the background. I don't want it to be an overwhelming color that's going to overtake the text. So I'm airbrushing on a high speed since I'm using metallic and I'm just trying to hit all of those caps. I'll airbrush all the way through and if I feel like I need to go back and add more color, I'll take another pass. Now I'm ready to lift the stencil genie and reveal the pattern and that looks awesome. It just looks like caps being tossed in the air. So now I'm going to load up my scraper tool. I'm using the piping icing consistency from my navy bag and I'm going to spread the icing gently and generously across the word congrats. I'm holding the stencil in place with my finger as I do this and as I swipe that scraper across the stencil, I'm just trying to get full coverage. Then I wanna go back and remove any excess. When I remove the excess icing, it allows me to reuse that stencil over and over again so that I can do more than one cookie. I'm gonna pipe an outline using number two and then this cookie is done. So this is an awesome cookie for your plaque, but let me show you how to take it to the next level by adding some text. I'm gonna get my projector out to help me with this part. I'm using my Bluetooth projector. So I'm going to link this with my iPad to make projecting it very easy. And I have the projector on a tripod. Take a look at this picture for my setup. I'm going to post a link to this projector down in the status if you're interested in checking it out. I use my remote that came with the projector to set up the image. So I've selected the iOS and because I'm going to mirror it with my iPad, I'm going to select the Mac option. Now on my iPad, I'll bring this into the screen. I'll show you that I'm just gonna pull down the settings menu and I'm gonna select screen mirroring and the projector does pop up. Now you can see that the image that I, of text that I wanna pipe onto the cookie is connected to my projector, but it's way too small. So on the iPad screen, I'm gonna actually change the size. I'm just gonna zoom in so that the text fits better on the cookie. And then I'll just slide the cookie around a little bit to make sure that the spacing looks good to me. Because the text is pretty small, I've sized down to a tip number one on my black icing and I'm using the lightest possible hand pressure to pipe these letters. Notice that I'm keeping my hand a little bit back and out of the way as I pipe these letters. Now I'm going to readjust the cookie so that the text on the bottom fits really well and pipe those letters. This cookie is almost done. I'm going to add a thin black outline just to pull the top and the bottom text together and finish off this design. Piping that extra text definitely adds a lot of interest to that cookie. 
but it also adds a lot of time. And you can see I've compared two sets of cookies, one that has no text and another set that has text on both the cap and on the plaque and they both look fantastic. So it's really up to you what kind of time you want to invest in your cookie project. Just a note on projectors. This is the third projector that I've owned and I really like this one the best because it mirrors with my iPad. But just know new projectors are coming out all the time. You should definitely do your research, check the return policies, and check the reviews to make sure that you're investing in a projector that works for you. The link below is not an affiliate link. I'm just sharing the model that works for me. If you have specific questions on the projector settings or how to pair it with your device, those questions are best asked to the company that you're buying from. I hope I've given you lots of inspiration for your graduation celebrations. Also, don't forget that I've provided the templates for any text that you might want to put on these cookies. And in addition to that, we also have a graduation decorating kit. This has the five cutters and the two stencils, the tip that we used in today's video, a sample of our tip list bags, and also a boo-boo stick. So if you're looking to recreate these cookies, definitely check out the link to that cookie kit down below. Finally, I would love it if you made these cookies. So if you recreate them, tag me on social media or use the hashtag flowerboxbakery so I can see what you're making. I hope you enjoyed this video and happy decorating.